Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. So as a content creator, I learn a new tool almost every alternate day and I also record and publish videos on those tools. Some of you might be curious, how do I learn these new tools? In today's video, I will share the step-by-step -step approach that I personally take in learning new concepts, tools, or even new technologies. If you look at the YouTube channel, over the past one month, I might have at least recorded videos on 10 different tools. I will explain how did I do that. The reason for making this video is very, very simple. At your roles, you might be also expected to learn new concepts. So by watching the approach that I take, you might have something to take away from the video. Perfect. Without wasting any further time, let's get started. What a lot of people do, they start with official documentation or some people start with YouTube videos. That's not at all wrong. I'm not criticizing their approach. But what personally works for me, because a lot of videos that I record, you know, by the time I start learning these tools, probably even the official videos are not available. Forget about other content creators recording the videos, but maybe the tools might have not recorded the official videos as well. Best example is Postman Spec Hub. I recorded this video by the time the feature is GA that is generally available for public. So what I usually do is I first focus on background or problem statement. Let me take a simple example. You know, if I have to learn EKS today, I don't directly jump onto the AWS official documentation. What I first do is understand why EKS. If Kubernetes is open source and if it is available for everyone, you know, why can't I simply host a Kubernetes cluster by my own? And if I host it, what problems do I run into? Only then I will understand EKS better. It doesn't matter if AWS is going to provide you the best documentation out there, but if you don't understand this problem statement, what happens if you host a Kubernetes cluster by your own and what challenges do you run into? There is no way you can understand EKS better. So the first step is to focus on the problem statement. And even after understanding this, I don't jump into the official documentation. At this point of time, I try to understand, are there any alternatives or are there any best tools available that is already solving this problem? For example, if Minikube already exists or if Red Hat OpenShift already exists, why Amazon started with something called as EKS? Because Red Hat OpenShift was available even before Amazon decided to start EKS. Or if I take one of my recent videos as example, you know, Postman started Postman Spec Hub, but before that, Swagger Hub already exists. So why did Postman start with Postman Spec Hub? So in the second step, I try to focus on the alternatives and understand what are the alternatives missing? Like why Swagger Hub is not the perfect solution? Or maybe why Red Hat OpenShift, where exactly is it lacking? And why did Amazon come up with EKS? Now, after this, I go with the official documentation. For a lot of people, as I told you, this might be step one. But for me, this is step three. Also, this is step three. You know, I spend a lot of time at the step three. In fact, you know, if I try to be very honest, I take approximately one and a half to two days to learn a new tool and record videos on that particular tool. Sometimes it might go up to two days, but not more than that. So at step three, I spend almost five to six hours reading the official documentation. Now, especially the tools that sometimes I deal with, they are very, very new. So 
I spend almost five to six hours to go through the official documentation. I read through every line. I read through every page, and only then I become confident or I get confident about that particular tool. So once I read the official documentation, you know, at this point of time, sometimes I look at the YouTube videos. So you might ask me a question, but Abhishek, why do you go through the YouTube videos? Because for some tools, the documentation is quite lengthy. Even if you try to spend five to six hours, sometimes you really don't get the gist of the particular tool. Like what is this particular tool doing? Sometimes you find it difficult. So what I do is I try to look at videos if it exists on the YouTube channel. For example, the video of the Postman Spec Hub that is on their official YouTube channel helped me a lot because it was just 10 to 15 minutes video and it explained everything that Postman Spec Hub was doing. Although that was at very high level, but it helped me a lot. So I also go through the videos. It's not that I don't go through any other YouTube videos. I definitely go through them if they are available. And this is my step four. Now, once I go through the documentation and official videos, or sometimes the best videos that are available on the YouTube. Now, this is where I start my practicals. Trust me, whenever I go through a tool, it is impossible that I don't do hands on that hands on on that particular tool. It can be EKS or sometimes it might ask me to provide the credit card details to try out the tool, but I definitely try that tool before recording video on the channel. And you might also know every video that I record, I, I just don't do the theory part. I actually do the practical hands on as well. So for me, it is also important that I do practical hands-on on that particular tool. And again, I spend good amount of time here. Uh, I also, you know, sometimes prepare notes at this particular step, but it is not mandatory. Once I do the practical hands-on, then again, I go back to the official documentation, but this time to list down all the features that that particular tool is providing. Again, if I take one example, or let's take EKS, for example, within five to six hours, I cannot go through all the features that EKS provide. So what I typically do is, you know, I spend one to two hours understanding what all features that EKS provide, maybe something like cluster autoscaler, or maybe EKS supporting a carpenter. So I try to understand in one to two hours, what all the features that EKS provides to its customers. Maybe I might not understand all the features in detail, but at least I get a gist of features that this particular tool is providing. Then what helps me a lot, you know, just like official videos, I also go through official blogs. Especially when I was recording video of the recent one, that is Spacelift, you know, I went through their official blogs and they provided step-by-step -step approach. Like, you know, they explained with screenshots, like these are the steps that you need to follow to integrate Terraform with Ansible. How do you create stack dependencies? And, you know, official blogs is something that I always recommend. Not every tool has the official blogs, but if a tool has official blog, definitely go through that because these blogs are written by the developers or written by the developer advocates that are working for that particular company. And finally, notes. In my case, sometimes I don't write the notes because I'm already recording the video on the channel, but maybe not everyone records videos. So if you want to follow these steps at this point of time, you can write a detailed notes. Maybe you can maintain a note so that after some time, you can go back to that particular notes for a quick revision. But in my case, I do videos on my YouTube channel. So if at all, I need a quick revision, I just go back and look at the videos that I have recorded. Anything is fine. Like either write a summary 
prepare the notes or if possible you can also record videos for yourself so these are the eight steps that i follow whether i want to learn a new concept whether i want to learn a new tool or even a technology i know you know it's not as simple or or it's not that easy as i've explained it takes months or at times it take years from the past 3 years i have been recording videos on the channel and over the last 5 to 6 years i have developed this habit of learning new tools new concepts and technologies so that's why it just takes me one to two days but probably if you are a beginner this might take up to 10 days for you or it might take even more for you but as they say make a habit and eventually that becomes easy for you so start building this habit especially in the world of ai and this fast moving cloud cloud native world it is important that you develop this habit there are new tools that are going to come probably you learn a tool today tomorrow it is replaced by the other tool or a new tool so i hope you found this video informative let me know what do you think about my approach is there something that i can add or do you feel i am following the wrong approach let me know in the comment section like every time thank you so much for watching today's video see you all in the next one take care bye bye